the Roman Empire, one of the most influential states to ever exist in human history. There's a reason Romaboos exist. Sadly, the Western Roman Empire fell in 476 CE, and the Eastern Roman Empire fell in 1453. I'm sorry. It's just still so fresh. But what if extinction didn't have to be forever? What if there was a modern successor to the Roman Empire? Rage Shadow Legends have asked me to stop calling them, so as usual, you can support me by becoming a patron and getting access to these videos 48 hours early. Alternatively, the best way to support me is to like, subscribe, share, and tap that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload. Also, don't forget to follow and subscribe to the various socials of all of the content creators who helped to make this video. Speaking of which, let's get on with the video. Now, to start off, I asked you guys across TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube which modern nation you believed was a successor to Rome. And you had answers. Smooth Brain activates Italy. Smoother Brain activates Vatican City. That's a very good choice, that one. Wales. It's an interesting choice, actually. Oklahoma Cherokee Reservation. Um... I didn't see this one in the build-up, so I didn't ask for an elaboration. Um, I'm moving on. Idi means Uganda. I did actually ask this person to elaborate, because I did see this one. Um, the title King of Scotland, which connects to the title King of England, which connects to Rome through other stuff, which we will look into a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb. Um, uh, no. Hmm, I'm going to stay a safe route and say Monaco. Again, I asked this person to elaborate, um, and they actually got back to me this morning, so thank you for that. They forgot that technically Napoleon took Moscow, then technically not their capital, so unfortunately we can rule them out because they eventually changed the capital from St. Petersburg to Moscow, so the modern nations that are left besides the Vatican, I would say Monaco can claim that title, or even say Mourinho. Yes, they were lost when the East Roman Empire fell, but then again so did all of the Roman Empire eventually. I'm only going by the fact that the the Byzantine was conquered by the Ottomans, so the second Rome was lost. The Russians told themselves that they are the third Rome, but for Monaco and San Marino, because I believe, if my memory serves me right, they were part of the HRE as a sole trading city. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not 100% sure on the history there, um, Pabs. Um, brilliant profile picture, by the way. I, am, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Portugal. Um, no idea. Um, no, but I will say the part about being HRE, that would make them ineligible. Um, HRE was not holy, not Roman, nor an empire. Well, it was an empire to start with. Um, Charlemagne should have married, as much as I hate Charlemagne, we should have let him marry Irene of Athens, um, and restored Rome. Hmm, United States. I'd say the UK, but its empire collapsed with freedom. The US is just going to full hard collapse. The US is an interesting decision, and you'll see why in a little bit. See, this is why I said the USA is an interesting choice, because as you're about to see, there is a pattern emerging here. The USA, it's collapsing within itself, and a nation only gets so big and powerful before it collapses. Now, I did dispute this, um, purely because that reasoning to me is not really like successor. It's not a continuation of the Roman Empire. That's what I was sort of looking for. But as I've received answers, I've expanded. What my original idea of the video was, was can you find a continuous line? But that's not how the Romans would have seen the continuation. You could, for example, say the Ostrogoths were technically a continuation of the Roman Empire because the institutions pretty much stayed the same. 
So I think it's the institutions that really make Rome. Am I bringing that up for a specific reason that will help my choice later on? Yes, yes I am. How does the moustache continue to get more and more glorious? <laughs> how did that How did that come and get in the list to be read? That's... Oh, oh, that's, that's a good comment. I like it. Finland, because the barbarians all came into Rome and the Romans took all the barbarian land, literally everything but Rome, and then got forced into the north into a wee little country that has so few people hidden in ice caves that they statistically might not even exist. Is this one of those weird Finland doesn't exist conspiracy theories? France, Andreas Paleohokos. I apologise to the entirety of Greece for that pronunciation who was heir to the Byzantine throne after Constantinople had fallen to the Ottomans, sold his rights to the throne to several European monarchs, including Charles VIII of France. No. Technically, Hungary. While the Holy Roman Empire was dissolved, it was dissolved during the Habsburg rule, and the Habsburgs continued as a royal family beyond the dissolved HRE. So technically, Hungary has a claim to the Roman Empire since their last royal family was the Habsburgs, who have a claim to the HRE, which in turn has a claim to Rome. That relies heavily on how valid the claim to Rome you believe the Holy Roman Empire had. Now this last successor comes from my good friend Ethan, who wrote the article Satan Sedation, Milton's Allegory for Oliver Cromwell. It's well worth a read and in the description below. Now this is an excerpt of the conversation we had on this topic. And Ethan said the United States, he then mentions the Senate, and that Rome for me is about military and cultural dominance. I then challenged him on this and brought up the Roman continuation from one state to the other. I won't go into what I said, because it spoils <laughs> what my pick is. Yes, because Rome is an idea, not an ethnicity. It is why they incorporated so much stuff. It is a political system and a way of doing culture. So yeah, the uh, the USA really ran rampant there. Um, I didn't expect that many people... I didn't expect anyone to pick the USA to be honest, um, so that, that was a learning curve, that was something new. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, one or two of those I hadn't thought of, specifically America, and perhaps we'll revisit one or two of them a little bit later. For now, let's see if we have any Roman successor states up north. And here to help guide us through such a Roman successor state is the brilliant individual who has visited more castles than I've had cups of Yorkshire tea. History of Megs. So my candidate for the successor to Rome is maybe a little bit rogue, but I think it's a really cool place and it has lots of links to um, its Roman heritage and that is York, obviously in Yorkshire. And obviously its history goes back a really long way, um, but we do know that a military fortress was founded by the Romans there in AD 71, so it's got a really long uh, legacy of Roman occupation and they actually stayed in York until um, the end of the Roman occupation. So there's several centuries of Roman history in York, which is really cool. And it's hosted some really big Roman names. You've got Hadrian spent time there, Septimius Severus and Constantius I. Um, and it was also declared the capital of Britannia Inferior too, which I think is really cool. It really shows how significant it was. And also it was self-governing um, for a period around this time too. So you've got like wealthy merchants, retired soldiers, that kind of thing. But again, I think that speaks of its importance and its kind of relevance um, in the Roman world. And like I was saying, there's lots of links to York's Roman heritage extant today. And also lots of cool Roman ghost stories, which I think is really interesting. Um, so the most famous one is about the old treasurer's house in York. And it's when a apprentice plumber was putting in a central heating system in the cellar. He heard like a really loud noise outside. He thought it was just a horn, maybe from a car or something. Um, but then men started emerging from the walls and he identified them as Roman soldiers. But you couldn't see below their knees. And it's interesting because we think this is because the ground level was different. Well, it's been theorised, obviously. It's all subjective, what you believe, but super interesting. Um, and 
it's crazy because a Roman road actually ran right through that location too. So yeah, that's an interesting little nugget of historical and ghost story information about York, which I think should be used as evidence. But there's also lots of Roman archaeology in York too, which still remains, which is amazing. Um, in the York Museum Gardens, you can see a bit of Roman wall, which is super cool. And also in the Yorkshire Museum, which is there too, there's lots of Roman artefacts. Um, I did a piece on my TikTok recently about a Roman hair piece, which was amazing. So that was found in a burial and it looks as if it could have been worn today. It's like kind of like an auburn, you would have worn it as like a bun. Um, and I think that's just amazing. There's so many tangible links to this period of history in York. It really brings it to life. And even today, I think York retains its significance as kind of a centre of cultural and administrative power in the North, especially, but also in Britain generally. Um, and I think if not a successor to Rome, York should definitely retain its title as the capital of Britannia Inferior. Thank you to History of Megs for helping out with this video and giving us that amazing answer. Now, to check out an idea that some of you posited a little bit earlier. And to do that, we've got Dennis Fang. So who's the modern day successor to Rome? I thought about saying something really edgy like, it's Venice, whoever has the triumphal quadriga, i.e. the horses of St. Mark, holds the legitimacy for Rome. But sadly, I don't think that's true. And that's because without question, the United States of America is indeed the third Rome. Sorry, Russia. Now, many like to believe that the modern democratic institutions of America were inspired by Athens, but I don't think that's true. And that's because the founding fathers, their main source for um, creating the first modern democracy was Plutarch, and he was not very, let's say, we the people. Building upon Platonic uh, philosophy, he believed that a voting base made of ordinary people would result in the governing by tyrannical farmers, ignorant blacksmiths, and generally ignorant uh, rabble-rousers. He believed that rulers should be philosophers educated in governorship and thus preferred the order and comparative stability of the Roman Republican model of government compared to the direct democracy of Athens. To avoid demagogues like Alcibiades of Athens, who's quite a character, this is why America isn't a direct democracy but a republic and has very few plebiscites. Um, this is why Americans vote for representatives um, who have in theory been educated and trained in the art of governing. America also has very similar separations of power um, in their government inspired by the Romans, even stealing the word Senate. American architecture too, particularly in Washington, DC is very obviously inspired by the Pantheon in Rome and not really the Parthenon of Athens. Also George Washington's role model, his character and virtue was based upon Lucius Sentiatus who inspired him to retire after his term in office to a farm and both figures would have very similar virtues associated with them in future generations. The story of both republics also are I think scarily similar. America's early story consisted of many dispossessed outsiders fleeing from Europe and their religious persecution to start afresh and according to legend, early Romans were criminals uh, from all over Italy, joining Romulus to start this new city. They also both expanded and became quite brutal colonial powers. They also threw off their foreign monarchs um, in their journeys to become republics. Uh, for Rome, it was the Etruscans, and for America, it was obviously the British. Both were also local powers. For the longest time, America was a local power in America, and Rome was a local power in Italy. But after fighting two major wars, in America's case, it was the First and Second World Wars, and for Rome, it was the first two Punic Wars. They became the de facto superpowers of their world. For America, it was the world, and for Rome, it was the Mediterranean. And this 
this all happened only within a couple of generations and from this unexpected sudden influx of wealth um, from becoming superpowers they both um, uh, suffered from increasing inequality um, they both instituted um, welfare schemes this also caused increased political polarization and demagogues and stuff like that so this is not a hot take but America is the new Rome thanks for watching Thank you, Dennis, for helping out with this video and giving that brilliant answer. Now, at this point, you probably think you've heard everything, but there is an extremely spicy take yet to come. And to give us that extremely spicy take, here's Home of History. Okay, so this is Home of History, and this is my take on who is the modern successor to the Roman Empire. And this might be a hot take, but I don't think there is one. I think the Roman Empire, the Roman state, ended in 1453. Now, a lot of states would claim to be Roman because they have just got uh, uh, some leader who's related to the former Roman emperors, or perhaps they control one of the former capital cities, but I don't think that's enough. I think that a massively complex and intricate transcontinental empire of the ancient and medieval world can't be reduced to one single thing like that. If we're going to attempt to define Rome and thereby look at who could possibly be a successor, I think the best way to approach that would be to look at Rome as a sum of its institutions, whether that's politically, religiously, uh, administratively, militarily, linguistically, any of these things, legally. It's, it, it, you have to look at Rome as a sum of all of those, I think. So if you're talking about legally, of course, lots of modern countries have been influenced by Roman law, but they've built so much upon it that Roman law only really plays a background role in their systems of government. If you, Again, if you look at systems of government, there are so many countries which have obviously been influenced by the Roman system of government with the Senate and the Emperor playing a role of sort of the legislature and the executive. But again, they've built on it with their own customs, with their own local influences, and nobody really tries to embody the idea of having an emperor and a, and a senate, which is, you know, sort of answerable to, not on paper necessarily, but in practice he's answerable to them. I don't think that is really embodied anywhere in the modern world. Linguistically, okay, sure, the, the, the two main languages of the empire being Latin and Greek, mostly just Greek after a while, when you only take into account the, the Eastern Roman Empire, yes, of course, the modern day nation of Greece, a lot of people there speak Greek, but that's no longer a language that covers so much of the Eastern Mediterranean. So that institution hasn't really been carried on. I don't want to touch too much on uh, on the religious side of it because, well, obviously that just opens up a whole different can of worms, but, you know, there are no longer what there's no longer one religious institution holding sway directly over such a large area of cultural centers etc etc so i don't think that that can be embodied by one modern state uh, if we look administratively, I, there's nowhere that operates like a Ro like the Roman Empire does anymore. We haven't got governors operating within provinces who are answerable to a Senate. We haven't got a theme system set up which operates like a kind of proto-feudalistic institution. There's nothing like that anymore. And if I remember correctly, the last thing is probably militarily. So militarily speaking, the way warfare is conducted by every modern country is completely different to the way the Romans operated. Their military was absolutely key to who they were. It defines part of their identity. And the modern day military industrial complex, modern armies, modern methods of warfare just do not reflect in any way the idea of having huge armies of legions standing on the borders of a massive transcontinental empire. Uh, they don't have uh, roaming field armies like they did in the theme system. That's just not embodied by any modern state anymore. And I think it's important also, finally, to actually look at how the Romans viewed themselves. Right up until the very end in 1453, the Roman citizens and indeed the Roman government and emperors still identified themselves as Roman emperors, as being Roman. That's who they considered themselves to be. That's all they considered themselves to be, are Romans. And they didn't think that that was embodied by anybody else. They didn't appoint a successor, if you will. And I don't think that there was a view in the literature of the time that any other country really embodied 
that and that nobody in the obviously they couldn't look forward to the future so no country that existed back then can claim to still be the same now but anyway that pretty much summarizes my reasonings as to why i don't think any modern nation state actually embodies what the roman empire was and therefore could actually call themselves the successor to the roman state i think that it all ended and it all fell in 1453 with the fall of constantinople thank you so much Thank you, Home of History, for that incredibly spicy answer. And thank you for helping out with this video. Now it's time for my pick. Before we get to my choice for the modern successor to Rome, I would like to add a quick honourable mention. The YouTube channel Majorianus makes an interesting case for the Welsh Kingdom of Gwynedd to be a Roman kingdom. Padam Besrud ap Tigid, or the Paternus of the Scarlet Robe, son of Tigid, came to Wales sometime after the Western Roman general, Magnus Maximus, had abandoned Wales. Padan and his son Edern, or Eternus, defended Hadrian's Wall, or the land just south of it, shortly after the complete Roman withdrawal from Britain. Edern's son Cuneda fought the raiding Irish in northern Wales. This was either to bring the region back under Romano British control troll or just simply to conquer the region for himself. Whatever the case, this action forged the Romano-British Kingdom of Gwynedd, although it probably had a more Roman name at the time. The kings of Gwynedd would claim descent from Magnus Maximus until they were conquered by Edward I in 1282. This was to connect themselves to a Roman past and, ergo, give themselves legitimacy as kings. And by extension, this means that the modern United Kingdom could technically be considered a modern Roman successor. Also, if you extended a little bit more, you could technically say that the United States of America is a modern successor to the Roman Empire, to add a little more validity to Dennis's and some of you guys' choice. Now, History of Megs mentioned Ibaricum, otherwise known as York. So, why is this important to my pick? Well... You see, it's where Constantine I, otherwise known as Constantine the Great, was proclaimed emperor by his men. Constantine was the son of the Kaiser or deputy emperor Constantius I Chlorus, who served under the Augustus Emperor Maximin. Constantine's mother was Constantius' wife or concubine known as Helena. Well, according to Eusebius of Caesarea, the conversion of Constantine the Great to Christianity began when the Roman Emperor had a revelation during the Battle of Milvian Bridge. Constantine's revelation was that if he and his forces used the Christian Chi Rho symbol, he would be victorious over his enemies. Constantine obviously did this, and the symbol became the official imperial insignia, as well as the symbol for victory over Rome's enemies, as well as the Christian notion of death, and Satan. Here a new cathedral known as the Basilica Constantiniano would be built. I apologise for all of the pronunciations there, this is like the sixth take. <laughs> Nicene Christianity would become the official state religion of the Roman Empire in 380 CE when Emperor Theodosius issued the Edict of Thessalonica. So what does all this mean? Well, at one point or another the Roman Catholic Church was an institution of the Roman Empire. Meaning that Vatican City is the clear modern day successor to the Roman Empire. And that is that. Thank you all so much for your comments, and thank you to all of the content creators who helped make this episode of Daddy's Histories possible. Please make sure to check them all out in the links in the description below. Now, what did you guys think of the episode? Do you agree with the Roman successors put forward, or do you disagree? Perhaps you had a completely different Roman successor in mind that simply wasn't here. If so, let us know in the comments below. And as the video comes to a close, it's time for me to say that there is only one clear modern day successor state to the Roman Empire. And that's Romania. I mean, come on, it's in the name. Let me know if you enjoyed the episode and what you would like to see next in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. 
Bye.